Titan CFO Ashok Sundhalia what he thought of the quarter gone by. Listen in. Quarter one is generally uh, among all the quarters a soft quarter for us. Uh, keeping that in mind and whatever was happening during the quarter, uh, uh, you rightly said, extreme heat waves kept customers uh, inside uh, doors. Uh, so footfalls were slightly lower. Uh, but overall, we are very happy and satisfied with the quarter performance. Okay, let's talk about the margin and net profit metric for this quarter. Can you elaborate on where that squeeze is coming from, Mr. Sonthalia? So if you look at EBITDA and EBIT level, we, we are fine. You know, we are in line with the venue growth. Uh, it is, uh, there are some financing costs which have gone up. Uh, uh, you are aware that, uh, you know, we acquired Carrot Lane during last year sometime in November. And uh, we raised uh, uh, long-term borrowing for uh, funding that. And that cost uh, is about... 62, 63 crore in a quarter, which was absent in quarter one last year. So when you compare at net profit level, so some of those things are playing uh, into why net profit is slightly lower than last quarter. Okay. And uh, the uh, how long do you expect this to carry on, the carrot lane costs, which you're so seeing as far in as the related, related borrowings are concerned, I think in next two years, we will pay it down. And when we had acquired at that point of time, also we had said that this acquisition will be EPS dilutive for two to three years. And then, you know, it should start adding to the overall EPS uh, profile of company. As a, a growth segment, though, Carrot Lane's growth uh, has been uh, pretty robust, all things uh, given, isn't it, uh, Mr. Sonthalia? When you compare to the India business, the studded mix, uh, all of that, Carrot Lane is performing as expected? Yes, so Carrot Lane grew about 18 to 19 percent, and within that, their core portfolio grew uh, about 22 to 23 percent. So we are overall happy. They, they margin-wise, they were almost flat, uh, slightly lower than last quarter one. Uh, but we see there is opportunity for this company to kind of keep improving their margin as they scale up. What are the growth targets you have for Carrot Lane as well as Mia? Uh, so, you know, uh, both uh, should be growing faster than Tanis just because of his scale. Uh, one, one is the scale. Tanis is at a very, very high scale. Um, and, and both the players, Carrot Lane and Mia, are addressing to a segment which is really, you know, working, uh, independent, uh, modern uh, women's class, where the India is really going through a huge revolution, I would say where the decisions and independence in uh, all those things are happening and they are riding that social change wave and we see a lot of opportunity multi year multi uh, you know uh, next 5 10 15 years that these brands should ride that wave absolutely but in terms of top line growth for fy25 what have you penciled in so so of course uh, tamanna we don't give guidance on the growth thing but as I told you, overall, Titan has a 27, FY27 guidance for jewel business put together. And, and we are tracking that, which okay. was 2.5 times from FY22. Okay, yeah. so you're on track for, uh, for the FY27 targets. All right, let's talk a bit about uh, the import duty cuts. Now, I think mm -hmm. a, one factor of a bit of a drag on Q1 has also been high gold prices. That has yeah. corrected quite sharply uh, since the budget. Are you already seeing the impact of that? And how do you see, uh, you know, uh, lower retail prices because of the import duty cuts uh, work out on demand? So, of course, import duty cut has been a very, very positive step for the industry and for organized players like us you know uh, while prices came down for some time and then again international prices have gone up because of geopolitics and tension and u.s interest rate cut announcement very likely you know like starting september so prices will keep going up and down but our competitiveness have certainly improved uh, the difference between our uh, prices and and the market uh, has kind of improved to some extent. And in the long term, it, it kind of uh, helps everyone in the industry because the gold sourcing will be uh, at par for everyone um, and, and, and it will improve competitiveness of our brands.
Mm. Uh, what about the inventory uh, hit? Because uh, you were, of course, carrying uh, inventory right before prices uh, came down because of customs duty. And I know there's an assessment you've given on it. Is that a one-time hit and is that expected to weigh in on this quarter? So, yes, it is a one-time hit, Tamanna. So, our inventory cycle is typically five to six months. And that is what we were told, that over next six months, roughly 500 to 550 crore is the hit which will go through as we liquidate or as we sell this event. Hmm. You've also guided Mr. Sontalia for higher marketing spends, uh, which you know makes sense if you want to consistently increase market share, there's more competition coming in. Uh, what is the impact on margins you see because of those higher marketing spends? Uh, we are not really uh, in a position to say the adverse impact of the margin at this point of time. It was very uncertain, but yes, marketing spends are going to go up slightly as the competition in the organized sector is increasing. But the macro or the the the, la the large trend where you know the industry is getting organized more and more, uh, uh, and and unorganized is coming down. It gives opportunity also for us to improve our market share. So don't see very significant impact but yes what is uh, the market share that uh, you're aiming for and when you're saying that the um, share of organized players is growing what are the kind of trends that you're seeing any numbers that you can add to so, that you know, we, we are currently eight percent our estimates suggest that we are currently eight percent of overall jewelry market and we believe by fy27 we should be uh, close to 10% or slightly above 10%. That's our estimate. Um, uh, yeah, so, uh, and, and uh, uh, yeah, so that's that's what I would like to say at this point. Yeah, and in, and in terms of organized players uh, growing in market share as, as an industry trend? For sure, for sure. You know, like uh, you, you look at the numbers every year and one, two percent is point. Uh, unorganized is giving in favor of organized. In terms of all your segments, Mr. Sonthalia, and, and I'll wrap this up in a couple of minutes, your wearables revenue is, is, is you know, slagging a bit. Revenues are, are have fallen despite volume growth. Why do you see right. that happening and do you see that persisting? So we earlier also talked that this seems to be up to festive the whole inventory glut which has come in the industry of wearable smart watches uh, will get cleared it is our expectation in next uh, one or two quarters and post diwali festivities uh, that should get normalized and we in titan are trying to kind of uh, slowly and gradually differentiate ourselves on the uh, a better price point better service better features etc but yeah, that's a slightly long term, uh, one to two years kind of a story. But in the short term, we believe that this kind of prices coming down should stabilize uh, in next one to two quarters. And the next two quarters become important, uh, Q2 and Q3, as we move towards Western uh, festive season. What's your outlook there? We, we are positive. July has been generally uh, started well. Uh, you know, after custom duty, we are seeing a lot of excitement uh, for the customers on the gold jewelry side, particularly, um, uh, which is good. Uh, uh, and more and more customers are coming back. More wedding days are expected in quarter two, quarter three, etc. In the second half of the uh, financial year. So overall, we are very, very uh, positive about the quarter two and quarter three.